stick. Okay. Alright, let's get back into the groove of things. Uh, what did we do last time? Oh, yeah. Got a whole shit ton of... Uh, what's our deputy pistol do? Okay, so... Hmm... Deals stench damage? Oh, I see. Yeah, sure, why not? We can always use poison damage, I guess. Mix up our melee and our ranged attacks a little bit. Uh. I got derailed. I know it. Oh, the Butterfield Range. That's right. We should do that. No, we're just gonna wander. Hey! Your keen eyes detect a secluded cave in the near distance. Exploring it would definitely be a good use of your time. How do we discover this? We have some damn good eyes, I tell you that much. Forging! Oh. One thing we do need to do. We have a lot of experience points. So I'm going to upgrade my moxie because I noticed guns are starting to get used a little bit more. And, uh, yeah, sure, why not? Let's, let's increase our money gain. Alright, okay, what's this? Hey, there's a plaque bolted to the cave wall here. A record of the events of the Expedition 2 and into Shaggy Dog Cave, November 1887. As recorded by Jim Plackwright. Wait, what? Oh god, that's that's actually kind of funny. Oh, there's another one. There's a plaque bolted to the cave wall here. Having acquired, through various and sundry means, a story of which is interesting in its own right, but better saved for another time, a map purporting to lead to a large cache of jewels and ingots of precious metals hidden by the infamous highwayman and train robber, Black Cole Jr., in the years before the cows came home. I, Jim Plackwright, along with three compatriots, those being Nathaniel Wyman, Cyrus Howard, and Douglas Watts, set out to find Shaggy Dog Cave and the aforementioned treasure. That is one sentence! That is one entire sentence. What? Could he not have used any more periods? The period is not that complicated to make. Our equipment and provisions consisted of one cart and a horse to pull it, four additional horses to be ridden, two shovels, a spade, and a mining pick, a large co coil of rope, one large basket of eggs, as well as an assortment of other trail provisions and cookware, my own collection of blank plaques and engraving tools, one large and shaggy dog, and a butt for. Is there anything else in this cave aside from the story? After traveling for two and a half days to the south and east, we arrived at a small town named Dirtwater, the largest settlement in the vicinity of Shaggy Dog Cave. Leaving the dog to watch the horses, the four of us entered the local saloon and each ordered a beer, except Sai, who was satisfied with water. The barman provided our drinks as requested, and then withdrew a small wooden box from underneath the bar, asking if we'd care to witness something real interesting. Considering we still had quite a few hours left to travel, we politely declined, and asked him if he knew a way to Shaggy Dog Cave. He replied that he had never been there personally, but gave us rough directions which correlated nicely with the notes on our map. Upon leaving the saloon, we discovered to our dismay that some unknown villain had tampered with our wagon. Fortunately, the only supplies missing were the boot for and the ba entire basket of eggs, apart from one that Doug had concealed within a pocket for safekeeping. We also discovered that the dog had us absconded with one of our horses, forcing Nate and Sai, after, drawing, after a drawing of lots, to share. After acquiring a barrel of fresh water for the trip, as well as a replacement before, but four, but to four, 
We headed out into the open desert. The sun shone down mercilessly upon us, though we took small sol solace in the fact that it would have been far more intolerable had we made this expedition during the summer months rather than November. In order to pass the time on the trip and resist becoming days from the heat and susceptible to desert mirages, we exchanged stories of our youth, which I will not be retelling here for reasons of length. Really? Huh. However, I will relate to you the three odd occurrences that happened to us during our trek through the desert. The first was two or three hours out of dirt water, when Nate noticed in the sand noticed a glint of sunlight upon a metallic object bar partially buried in the sand. This was revealed to be a brass oil lamp of foreign design and manufacture, which fortuitously set, still contained a quantity of oil. Deciding this might come in handy, we stashed it in the wagon with our other tools. Our next encounter was a nom with a nomadic goblin tribesman, who we discovered spoke excellent English. It inquired as to our destination, and we replied that we were looking for Shaggy Dog Cave, though we did not disclose the reason for our journey. The goblin confirmed that we were heading in the, on the correct course, and mentioned that he only had a short time earlier, had a short time earlier, witnessed a large and shaggy dog riding a horse in the same direction. We all agreed that this was an unusual sight indeed, and continued on our way. Sometime later, we encountered a large adobe hut occupied by two identical-seeming old men with wild hair and long white beards. They invited us to take shelter from the heat, which we gratefully accepted, and introduced themselves in as hermits. This struck me as peculiar, given that there are two of them, but I felt it would be rude to question them on that point. Can't really be a hermit if you're with someone. One of the hermits confirmed that we were near Shaggy Dog Cave, and the other hermit confirmed that what his brother said was true. They also commented that they had seen a large and shaggy dog riding a horse in that direction. We all agreed that this was an unusual sight indeed. The hermits refreshed our water supply in exchange for our before. I really need to know how to pronounce that word. And we continued on our way, excited to finally be nearing our goal. After two more hours, we finally arrived at Shaggy Dog Cave. Carefully keeping our excitement in check, lest we become incautious, we unloaded our equipment and supplies from the wagon, and took a brief respite in the cool shade of the cave entrance. To celebrate our arrival, Doug unpocketed and shared the egg we had saved from our basket that had been stolen in dirt water. Once we were rested, we decided the time had come to explore the cave. Discovering that we had neglected the pack torches, lanterns, or any other light source with which to illuminate the cave, we declared that it would indeed be it was indeed fortuitous that Nate had discovered that antique oil lamp during our travels. He gave the brass a quick shine and then lit the wick. And we were relieved to discover that it lit easily and provided a very adequate amount of light. As we headed into the cave, we were further encouraged by the fact that the floor was quite even and easy to traverse, and there were no side passages which might cause us to become lost. Despite this, I resolved to hang a number of plaques to mark our progress through the cave, and engrave them with the tale of our journey, so that others who discovered the cave after us might be entertained and edified by our story. Where's the part where they all die? Soon we came to the end of the tunnel. While Nate, Sai, and Doug tur took turns with the excavation, I completed the last of the aforementioned plaques. It was a matter of perhaps an hour before Sai's shovel struck a wooden surface with a hollow noise, and we hauled a traditionally styled treasure chest out of the hole with great excitement. I'm gonna be mad if there's a shaggy dog in a chest. The chest was locked with an ancient and rustling iron padlock, which broke easily from a single swing of our pickaxe. We opened the lid slowly, and the flickering light of our antique oil lamp shone brilliantly upon jewels of every color and shining ingots of precious metals, just as promised by the legends of Black Hole Jr., Joyous at, Joyous at a Triumph. We loaded the chest onto the, into the wagon and began the journey home. Thank you for reading, and may your own endeavors be equally successful.
I'm the Shaggy Dog. I read all of these things hoping for some measurement of possible treasure. It was an entertaining story, but that's all I got was an entertaining story. Nothing remotely interesting outside of that. I'm exactly where I was, no matter my efforts. <clears throat> it could have been as if I never explored this cave. And I didn't even get anything from the outside of it, I think, aside from this foraging cactus. Oh, 